All right, and now that I am done with my first round of Behemoth Bass Prototype orders, as promised, I am gonna get to work on this awesome guitar kit that I got from Sean over at Scar My Guitar. So let's see if we can make an already amazing guitar kit a little more awesome. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. All right, first thing I'm gonna do here is just add a little belly contour, just a little one. Not that there's anything wrong with this guitar shape or design. In fact, Sean and I collaborated on this guitar shape a couple years ago. You can check out that video if you want. But uh, I'm just not a fan of slab bodies, so we're gonna contour it. And let's go ahead and contour this up here. Since I have a sweet new finger sander, it's gonna make real quick work out of this. And then let's go ahead and carve this out a little bit more. I think I actually went that deeper than I originally drew it. probably earned us a few extra style points. What do you think? Sean was originally gonna give me a set neck kit and I said, heck no, bolt on or nothing. So I learned something yesterday when I took my first round of base orders to the photo studio to have my wife do some professional pictures of them. I had her originally photographing them up against a beautiful like wood palette backdrop. And the uh, photographer that owned the studio came in and said, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you need to go shoot those bases up against a matte black background. That way, the wood grain behind it doesn't conflict with the wood grain of your bases. I took that as a learning experience, and that's what I decided to try out here, is there's a lot of conflicting wood grain patterns on this instrument, and they're all beautiful. This front, the zebra wood, is beautiful. And the back, we've got all kinds of wood, mahogany, maple, black walnut, all kinds of good stuff. And I just decided that I wanted the front to be the front and the back to be the back and have it separated by matte black. So let's pull off this tape, see how it looks. Beautiful. Clean, both sides. I like that. Well, I broke this screw off down inside the bridge, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about drilling it out and putting a new screw in there. It's a string through bridge, so there's gonna be plenty of force holding that thing down. So I think four out of five is not bad. Instead of using the pickup mounting rings that Sean sent me, I am going to direct mount. And lately I've just been using this foam pipe insulation as my pickup backings for direct mounted pickups. And so far, it's worked surprisingly well. And it's super cheap and easy to find. See, perfect. So I hit a little bit of a snag here. This push-pull pot has a long enough shaft to go through the electronics cavity and thread on the nut. But this other one, that's supposed to be the tone pot, is a small shaft and the cavity is not routed deep enough for the threadings to poke through. 
So I'm gonna have to route that a little bit deeper, which is a bummer, because I already got my shielding in there. But you know, you get a DIY kit, you gotta fix some things usually. I also just realized there's uh, no hole for the output jack, so gotta do that too. Before I put strings on, let's check a couple things. Definitely gonna need to do some work to that nut. It is way too tall. It looks like it's cut properly and has a good radius on it, but it's gonna need to come down. I'm gonna need to trim a little off the sides. And then, assuming I get that nut done properly. Yes. I think also I'm going to need to shim the neck as well, because these saddles are already at their minimum, and that action is way too, way too tall. So, yeah, let's do both those things. Time to string it up and see how it sounds. For strings, I'm gonna use a little secret recipe I've been cooking up, more about this later. All right, so let's do a real quick tone test. Uh, we're gonna start out clean, just using my Blackstar HT5R. I'm actually stoked that I have a garage space now where I can do sound demos with a real amp for once in my life. That is great. So, what are we on, neck pickup? Yeah. Cool, Re really bassy and really trebly, kind of a scooped mids profile. Middle. That sounds really nice with that mini humbucker mixed in. Coil split. Kind of more of a telly sound. I like a better humbucker. That mini humbucker bites. Cool. Oh, coil splitting it really tames it quite a bit. All right, let's put a little bit of dirt on that. softer touch. How about that neck pickup? Yeah, I like that. Very touch sensitive. I really like that. That sounds really good. sounds great. All right, let's review the kit now. So to summarize, things that are cool. Completely 100% handmade here in America with a handmade neck, handmade body, uh, hand done fretwork, 
And then pickups that are hand wound here in America, just super high quality exotic woods used here. Okay, zebra wood and mahogany, walnut, maple, high quality components, you know, full size uh, CTS pots, Grover locking tuners, a bone nut. As far as quality is concerned, compared to most of the kits that I review, this is like head and shoulders above the rest, obviously. Another thing that's cool is the option for custom inlays on the neck. Yeah, I don't know that I can necessarily gig a guitar that says Guns and Guitars on it, <laughs> but it's certainly gonna look cool hanging on my wall, that's for sure. And uh, it plays like a dream, it sounds fantastic. I really don't have a whole lot of gripes with it. So if we're gonna talk about things that suck, not a whole lot, to be perfectly honest. I had to shim the neck pocket. That's common with most kits. Um, Sean forgot to send me a control cover cavity plate, so that's open until I make one. And this might be a result of this thing just sitting unfinished in my shed for a few months. Um, but there were a couple high spots on the frets, so uh, Arizona is really hard on necks and frets in particular. So I'm not gonna fault Sean for that. I think the frets were probably perfect when he sent it to me. But even still, as it is, it's still way better and more playable than any other kit that I've ever reviewed. But the biggest thing that sucks about this kit is that when Sean sent it to me, originally he said that he was gonna be building these for sale and now he's not. So you actually can't buy this kit. So actually the only way that you can get your hands on one of these kits is if you are subscribed to Sean's Scar My Guitar channel when he hits 20,000 subscribers. Now, I wanna encourage you guys, don't subscribe just so you can win one of these guitars. Go check out his videos, and if you like his content and you're gonna watch his content, then subscribe to his channel. But if you're not actually gonna watch his videos, don't subscribe. Um, or at, le at the very least, do Sean the courtesy of unsubscribing after the giveaway. Uh, because I know he's dealing with a lot of inactive subscribers because he's tried to grow his channel via giveaways, which is the worst way to grow a YouTube channel, by the way. Quick tip for you guys. So the reason why I'm doing this video is Sean's just a really good friend of mine, and he's one of the few people that have really kept in close contact with me when I hit the road. And uh, I've really appreciated his friendship, and I wanted to help him out. So uh, I wish that you guys could buy this because it's a stellar kit. I mean, I love the shape. Look at how freaking cool it looks. I love the the high quality, you know, zebra wood and everything, and the custom inlays. It really is a beautiful guitar, and I really wish that he was selling these. I think even if he added a couple hundred dollars onto the price to you know, make it worth his time, you know, sold these things for like seven or $800. I think it would still be an awesome value for what you get. So thanks Sean for sending me this guitar. Uh, I'm gonna hang it up here in my workshop so you can see it in the background of all my videos from here on out. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. And if you like my kit reviews anywhere from cheap Chinese import kits to high quality made in America kits, then make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I got more kit reviews coming up, okay? Just because I've started a guitar manufacturing business doesn't mean I'm not gonna be still reviewing and building DIY kits, okay? That's my roots, that's what I love to do, and I got more of that coming your way. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in those videos.